with me now in the studio is the Treasurer, Scott Morrison. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Lou. You've released your costings today, as we heard Sabra explain. You've found more than $2 billion over four years with a crackdown on welfare. Mm. How is it possible that you've been in government for three years and only now have you uncovered a potential $2 billion worth of abuse of the system? Well, we had already announced measures uh, both in last my EFO and last year's oh. budget which had identified additional ways to um, ensure that debts were being repaid and, and as the technology improved, uh, we're learning even more ways to do this. And I'll give you an example. In, in my EFO of last year, we announced a one point, around $1.9 billion measure, which was involved in data matching. Now, that was for past years. Now, that program is on track and we're going to apply it to future years as well. And so that's that's a principal area where a lot of this revenue is coming from, but it's because of the success of the measures we're already putting in place, as well as a number of other initiatives. We always hear governments reach for welfare crackdown. I mean, probably the 25 years I've been a journalist, it's always something people talk about cracking down on welfare. I mean, how much more welfare crackdown is there to do? Well, it's, it's a never-ending cycle. I mean, this is a $150 billion plus budget, Lee. I mean, what we announced today represents a, a, an efficiency saving of 0.3% of our outlays in the social welfare system. So, and one of the important things we're trying to do with this initiative that we've announced today is help people who are engaging with this system. Most people, if they find themselves in debt or overpayment, it's often just a mistake, it's an error. And so we've worked out ways to proactively help people or target people who may be at risk of doing that, particularly people who have irregular incomes and can often get these things wrong. So proactively dealing with it up front saves them money, saves us money. But again, I come to the point, I don't mean to labour it, but mm. you know, debt and overpayment, they're pretty obvious mistakes that one would have thought that successive governments would have been well on top of before now. Well, it's a big system, but now we have better technology which enables us to do this. And the upgrade of sections of the MyGov site is a important part of what we're doing, having the apps here so people can actually update their income uh, more readily and update when they have changing in life events. Now, you couldn't do that five years ago. You can do it now. And the technology we're able to use now is improving. And as a result, you continuously improve. Why are you making such a big deal about the size of Labor's deficit over the next four years when it's only a fraction larger than yours? It's 20% higher than ours, Lee. But when we get to four years' time, at the end of the forward estimates, Labor's, be double proje Labor's projecting a deficit of 11.3 billion. <coughs> Excuse me. The Coalition's projecting 5.9 billion. That's a difference 5 .3 of. 5.3 after today, actually. That's, Lee. A, that's a difference of 5.1 billion, a negligible amount given the overall size of the Australian economy. Lee, it's a 20% increase in the deficit over four years, and at the end of those four years, they're deficit will be twice as large as the coalition's. That's I don't, only $5 billion, I don't though. Consider 16, $5 billion. I don't consider $16.5 billion at a trivial end, amount. At the end, it's $5 billion. It's over the four years, Lee. You don't get the money back. By the end of the four years, it's $5 billion. Yeah, which is twice our deficit. But five, twice our deficit. $5 billion, GDP is $1.62 trillion. Well, Lee, if you want to argue for bigger deficits, you can. I think deficits should be lower. Just, un un just... Under our government, what there will be is a deficit which is $16.5 billion less than what Labor is doing. What Labor is doing over the next four years will increase the cumulative deficits over that period of time by 20%. Now, at a time when our AAA credit rating is under scrutiny, as it always is, always is, and we've maintained the AAA credit rating over the entire time we've been in government from all the agencies, Further stress will be placed on that through higher deficits. But you can't guarantee... Particularly because of decisions that are made by governments. Now, we've made decisions... Can't, you can't guarantee, though, no, no government could guarantee that the AAA credit rating will be maintained under your leadership. What I can guarantee, though, is not making decisions that will make the deficit worse. Now, what we've done over the last two and a half years is we've made policy decisions that have improved the budget position by $10.3 billion. We've done that over just three years. Now, what Labor are doing they're going to say that they're going to make the deficit worse through policy decisions, not changes in economic forecasts or changes in the iron ore price or things like this, but because of decisions they will take, they will make the deficit worse by more than tw by 20%, $16.5 billion. But last week, Bill Shorten was on the program and I took him to task over exaggeration and hyperbole around Medicare. Are you doing exactly the same thing here with the budget? Because really, in the greater scheme of things, six to, even if I take your number that mm. you prefer to talk about, the $16 billion, that's nothing compared to $1.62 Trillion. Here it is, hands on the heart. Under Labor, deficits will be higher, debt will be higher, taxes will be higher, well, you can't spending put your hand will be higher. And say what they're going to do. No, you I can, can actually because all of those figures are from their costings. I'm, the, the heart of my question is: Are you exaggerating the impact of what is really a fairly small um, difference in the numbers when you look at the overall size a of the Australian not. economy? Absolutely not. Sixteen and a half billion dollars, a twenty percent increase in the debt uh, deficit, and, and and an increase in the debt over that period of time will be a triple A risk to our triple A rate 
meeting, asks all Eastlake. That's what he said today. He said Labor were a greater risk to our AAA credit rating. He said it today. But if you're holding up the AAA credit rating as some sort of benchmark, the reality is next year, two years' time or whatever, you might be in government and we might not have a AAA credit rating. Yeah, but I can control the things that we can control. But and I can control how much about we your spend. Economic management? I can we, no, not at all. It, what it says is we will control what we spend and what we tax and we're going to ensure that we don't add to the tax burden of the country uh, based on the forward projections and that we won't uh, increase spending as a share of GDP. And as a result, we're reducing the deficit and Labor will increase the deficit. Today, Malcolm Turnbull said that what political parties say they will support and oppose at one time is not necessarily what they will do. Is that a wise admission from a man four days out from an election day campaigning on a message of trust and stability? Well, it's correct when he's talking about the Labor Party, which is what he was doing. I mean, since we first belled the cat on Labor's black hole, what we've seen since then is they've backflipped on the school kids' bonus, they've backflipped on the, the pension assets test, they've backflipped on hospital funding, they've backflipped on in local government funding. Some almost $50 billion, and not to mention um, they're now going to, uh, on, on foreign aid funding and all these sorts of things, they've backflipped on all of those. But you say that as if you haven't backflipped on plenty of policies over the years. Look at the promises that were made going into the last election and look at the surprises that were sprung on the Australian well, public, I'm such as the Medicare co I'm simply making the point that Labor went round the country campaigning on all of these things and now they say they won't support things in the future, but, but their but, record is... But you guys do that too. Well, I'm, I'm making a comment on that, Lee. You're asking me about Malcolm Turnbull's comment and his comment was about the Labor Party. And in this in this campaign, Labor just keeps backflipping on all of these commitments that they led people to believe that they were going to do something different. Now, I think that is incredibly dishonest. I mean, they always knew that they couldn't afford what they said they were going to reverse well, Did you guys always funding. know you were going to introduce a Medicare co-payment last Last time around? What, what we didn't, um, as, as the Prime Minister at the time and the Health Minister at the time were making the point, they made the point about with the, with the fund that was designed to support uh, medical research and things of that nature, that offset those changes. So, um, look, that is a matter for, for that time, Lee. What, what I'm saying is the budget we're putting forward at this election and the costings I outlined today show an improvement in the budget position, not a worsening of it. Labor's announced a worsening of the budget at the worst possible time, which is the uncertainty and volatility we have in global financial and economic circumstances today. If we can turn to another matter before we run out of time, sure. the same-sex marriage plebiscite. Mm. If your own electorate voted against um, same-sex marriage in the plebiscite, would you vote against same-sex marriage in the parliament? I've always said, Lee, I've been a, pro a proponent of the plebiscite. And my view is, if the plebiscite is carried, nationally, then the legislation should pass. So, if the so would you vote for if it? If the plebiscite is not carried, then I think that settles the matter. No, no, but if the plebiscite is carried, will you vote for same-sex marriage? I've said that I will respect the outcome of the plebiscite. Why can't you just answer that question clearly? Would you vote for same-sex marriage? I'll, yes no? I'll use my words. You can use yours, and you're not allowed to put words no, no, in my I, mouth. I, would like, I have I would said like clarity. that I will respect the outcome of the plebiscite um, entirely. But I would like clarity I for our audience, and I think that it. that answer doesn't make it clear. Would well, you then I, I vote for same-sex marriage, yes or no? Um, what I will do is respect the outcome of the plebiscite, and if the plebiscite passes, then the legislation will pass. With, with I give your you vote? that commitment. With your vote? I will respect the outcome of the plebiscite. <laughs> I'm not sure why you can't answer if it would because be with Lee, your Because, Lee, I, I get to choose the words I use as a politician. You get to use the words you use to put questions, and that's how it works. All right. Well, we'll allow our um, viewers to make their judgment as to what they think you're going to do. Scott well, Morrison, we appreciate you coming in many times during the election campaign. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday night. Thank you very much.